بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Last session concluded with فما له من قوة ولا ناصر Allah Azza wa Jal goes on to say and give another oath as he started the surah with an oath he gives another oath within the surah as well وَالسَّمَاءِ ذَاتِ الرَّجْعِ وَالْأَرْضِ ذَاتِ الصَّدْعِ By the sky having rain clouds which give rain again and again. الرَّجْعِ رَجْعِ means something that returns, continuously returns. Goes and comes back. Produces and reproduces. And this, according to the predominant tafsir of the ayah, is referring to water, to the rain, right? The word al-raja. Uh, and it's referring to the cycle of water. See, it drops as rain, and it comes down, it lands either on the soil which observes it, or goes on oceans, sea, lakes, uh, rivers, whatever. And then it evaporates again, goes up, and then rain is formed, and Allah causes it to fall again and so on. It's a continuous cycle. وَالْأَرْضِ ذَاتِ الصَّدْعِ And by the earth which cracks open. It cracks open to gush out strings or for plants to go through, penetrating, go through uh, the soil or earth. Now, these are two scenes, one in the sky and one on earth, that uh, in many cases are reason for life to continue. See, rain drops down, it falls on, on the soil, the uh, plants or the trees start to form, and then it shoots up, it cracks the soil open and goes up. Can you imagine if Allah Azza wa Jal did not allow the earth to crack open, to split open, what would happen to humanity? Destruction. No food. No food for humans, no food for animals. No food. So these are two blessings Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by in this part of the uh, surah. And again, there is a resemblance between these two verses and the set before that. The set which spoke about the origin of the formation of mankind. Rain, water, that falls down, Allah used fluid that gushes out, right? And then uh, the plants penetrate and go out and the formation of the uh, baby that comes out of his uh, mother's womb. Uh, but the difference is clear between the cycle of the water and the cycle of mankind or the life uh, of mankind. So Allah swears by the heavens or by as sama again and what it has and by the earth. He swears by them. So what's expected, an answer is expected or something to be highlighted. Innahu laqawlun fasl. Indeed it meaning the Qur'an, is a decisive statement. So Allah Azza wa Jal is swearing by these two things that the Qur'an is a decisive statement that distinguishes between truth and falsehood, between the one who is worthy of worship, Allah the Almighty, 
and for false idols that the Quraysh used to worship, or any false idol for that, or deity for that matter. To distinguish between Muhammad وسلم, as a true messenger and magicians and poets, because they used to accuse him وسلم, of being a magician and a poet, right? So Allah Azza wa is swearing that this Quran is a criterion by which truth, truthfulness and falsehood or the truth and falsehood are distinguished. وَمَا هُوَ So it's a decisive statement which only arrogant and stubborn people would deny. And it is not amusement. It's not for entertainment. Again, these two verses are the answer. Allah swore by the uh, heavens, and by the sama and the earth, that the Quran is decisive and it's not for entertainment. Unfortunately, many Muslims deal with the Qur'an as entertainment. What is meant by this? I mean, what do you mean when you say it's not an amusement or entertainment? It means it was sent down for a different purpose. It was sent down so you reflect upon it and act upon it. Learn it and act upon it. It's not to say, MashaAllah, what a good speaker. Or, MashaAllah, what a nice voice of, re of this reciter. Oh, MashaAllah, I prayed behind this man in Salat al-Isha. SubhanAllah, what a beautiful voice. What did he recite, Akhi? Oh, I don't remember, but his voice was just astonishing. SubhanAllah, what do you mean his voice? So did you react to his voice and you did not react to the words of Allah? You were not heedful of the words of Allah, but you were very attentive to that tone. As if we're listening to music. So Allah is saying, وَمَا هُوَ بِالْهَزْلِ It's not there for amusement, for entertainment. Then Allah Azza wa Jal directs his speech to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the end of the surah saying innahum yakiduna kayda indeed they are planning a plan kayd in arabic refers to planning or plotting evil plan against an enemy uh, in secrecy, in ways that are unexpected, very vicious, very tricky. So Allah is telling Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they are planning. The Quraysh are planning against you and against your people, against the followers, against the believers, the oppressed believers in Mecca. The conspiracy against you is being plotted behind closed doors. I'll give an example when they conspired to kill Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam before the hijrah, before he migrated to Medina. One of the most evil devilish plots they had is that they will pick a man from each tribe, from 10 major tribes, and they will all go kill him. So no one can go and ask for revenge when he is killed sallallahu alaihi wasallam because whoever is going to be doing that is attempting to fight 10 major tribes which is impossible which will make mission accomplished with no casualties and no losses so it's a kaid it's a secret evil devilish plot allah is comforting muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the believers that I am aware of the plan. 
I am aware of these secret plots. I am informing you that they are doing it, so I am aware. And when someone is being cared by Allah Azza wa Jal for, he will certainly feel secured and safe. And will also feel that regardless of what this plan is, Allah knows it. So Allah Azza wa Jal will take care of me. What does this do? I mean, when, when Allah tells Muhammad وسلم, and the believers at the time that there is a plot, I'm aware of it. So they feel secure and safe and are therefore able to persevere. Because they know that regardless of how long it is, Allah Azza wa has a wisdom. He knows of what's going on. And he's allowing part of that to be implemented, part of the plot, for, a, for an objective. But soon it will be terminated. Soon it will end. And it will end with the victory of the ones who are supported by Allah Azza wa Jal. How, how is that confirmed and reassured in the hearts of the believers? The following verse. Allah says, وَأَكِيدُ كَيْدًا Okay, they're plotting, but I'm plotting. I am planning. They have their own plans and I have my own plans. So Muhammad وسلم, no worries. You do not need to be concerned about this. And the believers who follow you do not to be concerned, need not to be concerned about this because I am planning to counter that plan. They're planning, they're plotting, I'm aware, so when, see, when, when, when there is uh, a conflict between two entities, and to Allah belongs the loftiest of examples, when two people or two, two groups have plots against each other, when one of them knows the plan of the other, and starts planning according to that, to counter that, without the first one knowing that the other party knows, the loss will be very fast and very painful and very sure. فَمَهِّلِ الْكَافِرِينَ أَمْهِلْهُمْ رُوَيْدًا So allow time for the disbelievers. Give them respite for a while. Now, uh, first of all, this is a warning to the disbelievers. Allah is telling Muhammad, so don't be concerned, just give them respite, deal with them gently, and don't hasten for revenge, right? And then the, the uh, expression used, فَمَهِّلْ You, O Muhammad, give them respite. It is as if Muhammad وسلم, is the one in charge. Though Allah Azza wa Jal has the ultimate power and authority, and He's the one in charge, but this is to show the lofty rank of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The scholars of Tafsir said that this verse and other verses like it reflect the love of Allah Azza wa Jal to His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the rank Allah Azza wa Jal placed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and distinguished him from all other humans by making him appear as if he is the one who is making the call although the call and the plan, and the implementation of the plan, and the results of the are all in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. But it's just to show how compassionate Allah Azza wa Jal and loving Allah Azza wa Jal is to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and how high his rank in the scale of Allah Azza wa Jal uh, is. And it 
gives the sense of mercy to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and those who follow him from the believers who were uh, oppressed uh, oppressed during the Meccan uh, period with this we conclude the uh, the verse we ask Allah azza wa jal to enlighten us and teach us more of his faith and make us firm on our belief Allahumma ameen wa sallallahu ala muhammad subhanakallahu wa hamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu